if you're going to spend tax dollars, then you need to be honest with taxpayers about where that money is going. And um, and furthermore, I think you should also explain, like, why are these needed purchases and, and what value are we getting in return for it? Hey, everyone, you're listening to the Canadian Taxpayers Podcast. I'm your man on the ground here in Ottawa, Franco Terrazano. I'm here also holding the fort with me with our investigative journalist, Ryan Thorpe. And Ryan, you've dug up another doozy of a story on the crazy ways the Trudeau government is spending our tax dollars. Ryan, why don't you break down what you discovered for our listeners here? Yeah, for sure. I think crazy is the the right word here, Franco. Um, so we managed at the CTF, we managed to get our hands on a 440 page, uh, 445 page document, actually. Um, it's a series of internal government records, essentially laying out every time the federal government has purchased branded promotional merchandise in recent years. So the the records cover a period of about 28 months, beginning in January 2021, up until May 2023. Um, And it includes responses from every federal uh, agency and Crown Corporation. Um, So just to kind of start things off, let me give you a couple of quick examples of the type of purchases that were out here. Yeah. So the Business Development Bank of Canada spent $17,600 on branded golf balls. <laughs> Investing, <laughs> Investing Canada shelled out $12,500 on custom made candles. Farm Credit Canada dropped $10,600 on promotional air fresheners. And, and that's really just the, the tip of the iceberg here. Thousands of dollars on branded candles, folks. Like, let's just think about exactly what's going on here. (laughs) They're spending your money on candles and then lighting those candles on fire. Now, somewhere in there, there has to be a metaphor of of how the federal government literally burns our tax dollars in fire right in front of our faces. Now, look, all of this is is crazy. Uh, If you're not going to cry, you got to laugh. But let's just like take a step back here and ask the obvious question. Like, why does the federal government feel like it needs to brand itself anyways? Yeah, that's one of the first questions that I had, I I got to admit, when we did get our hands on these documents. And I I think in this case, um, the federal government, it really needs to come out and make a case for why these purchases were justified. And if they can't, I think heads should roll here, because as you keep going through the document, it just gets more and more absurd. So uh, the Windsor Detroit Bridge spent $990 on branded candy. I didn't even realize it was possible to brand candy, but apparently the (laughs) the Windsor Detroit Bridge needed some of this. Uh, The Jacques Cartier Bridge, not to be outdone, dropped $9,700 on polo shirts. Um, And again, setting aside the question of why do the federal government need to brand and promote itself? Why do bridges? You know, this is this is absolutely ridiculous. The Business Development Bank of Canada spent thirty seven hundred dollars on branded mints. We're still in the the one second here. One second. Thirty seven hundred bucks on branded mints. That sounds to me like entitled mints. Like, let's just get to this point of how crazy it is that you have a bridge promoting itself. Like, I'm pretty sure when you get to the bridge. You're, you're pretty clear that the bridge is there. You know what I mean? Like they don't need to be spending money on polo shirts and candies for, you know, that when you get to a bridge, that in fact is a bridge. Yeah. And, and just, it keeps going on. It keeps getting weirder. The Canada Development Investment Corporation spent $18,000 on knitted wool socks. Uh, <laughs> Destination Canada spent $9,000 on charcuterie boards. One agency spent uh, about fourteen hundred bucks on Rubik's cubes. Another spent about eighteen hundred bucks on uh, Leatherman tools, kind of fancy pocket knives. And yet another spent eight hundred and twelve dollars on pizza cutters. The Department of Justice spent thirty three hundred bucks on stress balls. Uh, and Export Development Canada spent forty one hundred dollars on a climate change trivia card game, whatever that is. And what does that have to do with? Export Development Canada's mandate, I I don't know. Um, And one of my personal favorites is I tallied up uh, across all departments and agencies how much they were spending on uh, reusable tote bags. And uh, over the 28-month period, they dropped about 200 grand. Um, And there was one department in particular that was racking up about 4,500 bucks on tote bags every single month. Man, the fact that like the Department of Justice spent 3,300 smackers on stress balls, like that stresses me out. Okay. That like, that personally makes me go insane. 
if I'm, if I'm not already insane to begin with. Okay, but that's neither here nor there. Now, what is here nor there is that when a business brands itself like McDonald's, the Golden Arches, I love a good McDonald's, uh, a good McDonald's burger, fries, and nuggets at like two or three o'clock in the morning on Friday or Saturday. So, but look, they brand themselves because they have to compete with like Burger King or Wendy's or Arby's or like Subway. Right. That's why businesses need to brand themselves. Um, now, the federal government spending like these like tens of thousands of dollars on these different branding exercises. It's like you, you have to be wondering, like, is there like this new gang in town here in Ottawa that the federal government thinks it needs to like out brand, out promote itself so it can keep collecting our taxes? Like, of course not. And this is why uh, all of this is really mind boggling. Now, Ryan, I know it gets worse. I know there's some crazy individual spending, but were you able to tally like the total cost to taxpayer from all the different branding merch throughout these departments? Yeah, so the answer to that is no. Um, we don't know how much money the federal government spent kind of across the board, through, across all crown corporations and federal departments, how much they spend on branded promotional material. Now, why don't we know? It's not simply because here at the CTF, we you know weren't interested or weren't willing to do the work. We don't know because the federal government either cannot or will not tell us. So this 445 page document that we received as, as a bit of background here, how we got this was that this document was released in response to a parliamentary order paper question from a conservative uh, member of parliament, John Broussard. So on May 2nd, he went to the government and he asked uh, all the departments and crown corporations um, to produce this information. How much are you spending on branded promotional material? They were given seven weeks to respond in writing, which they did on June 19th. But there was only one agency, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, that uh, over the seven weeks that they had to respond, that could be bothered to tally up their promotional expenditures, right? All told, the fishery department spent $916,000 wow. uh, or an average of about $32,000 a month. Um, but here's the thing, the fisheries department, uh, on, while they did do the good thing and like tally up their purchases, they couldn't provide any information at all on where the money was going, what was being bought, why it was needed, and what value, if any, taxpayers were getting for these purchases. And the lack of transparency didn't stop there. So the CBC uh, slash Radio Canada, the RCMP, Environment and Climate Change Canada, and Global Affairs all said they either didn't track promotional purchases or didn't have the time to provide disclosure. So the key thing to note here is this isn't these agencies saying, oh, we don't buy branded promotional merchandise. What they're saying is, yes, that they do, but they either don't track how much they're spending on it internally, which is unacceptable, or two, uh, that they do track it, but they had seven weeks to respond and they couldn't assign one single staffer to do the work to actually tally it all up. Uh, meanwhile, the, the Canadian Security Intelligence Services confirmed that it purchased uh, a bunch of promotional material, but they declined to say what they bought. Uh, and for people who don't know, CSIS, that's Canada's spy agency. So presumably uh, they couldn't reveal what sort of promotional material they're buying uh, because spy stuff, I guess. Uh, and then the Canada's Museum of Science and Innovation, Telefilm Film Canada, and uh, the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, as well as the Canada Lands Company, all also refused to say what they bought and how much was spent. And these folks cited it as sensitive third party information that couldn't be released. So uh, across multiple agencies and crown corporations, we just have an utter lack of transparency here, which makes um, which makes tallying up how much was spent on these uh, items uh, impossible. But but we do know, just based off the information that's been released, that we're talking of millions of dollars here. And when we do get information on the types of purchases that they're being made, it's just a never ending list of frivolous, ridiculous expenses. Okay, I got like four things to say here. So make sure I get through all four and then I'll hand you back the microphone, okay? Number one, I mean, I'm just listening to you explain the CSIS that they confirmed that they did have like some promotional material. Uh, they wouldn't tell us what it was. And like, 
you know, I really hope this isn't the case. I mean, it probably isn't, but I'm just like imagining like some spy out there, like somewhere uh, across the Atlantic or something like that, just like with like night vision goggles with just like CSIS right on the right on the on the top. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not really an expert when it comes to espionage, but I'm pretty sure we shouldn't be sending our spies out to the field uh, with CSIS merch, right? Just absolutely ridiculous. The second thing, I think I'm going to get through it all here, folks, is like you mentioned, what was it? The fisheries department that was almost a million dollars, yeah. right? Over over that 28 month period, almost a million bucks uh, on branded merch. Now that's one department, the fisheries department, spending like 900k plus on this kind of branded merch. Like, just think about the actual cost to taxpayers if you go across every single government department, every single crown corporation and agency. Like that's. I, I I would I would guess that it's kind of an outrageous tab if if we were able to get our, our hands on that information. Uh, the third thing that I want to point out here, folks, like we're kind of making fun of uh, the government here. And, you know, in the last statement I made, I was talking about, like, why does the government even need to promote itself? Remember, we're talking about departments and agencies promoting the department and agencies. We're not talking about like the government spending money being like, oh, hey, just so you know, we're doing this program or that program. I mean, we would probably be able to debate the merits of that anyways, but it's not even like it's promoting programs. They're literally getting like polos <laughs> with their names on it or pizza cutters or charcuterie boards or candy, right? Like th this is how outrageous this type of spending is. Now, the fourth thing, I'm going to do it. I want to segue into the big issue here, right? Obviously, there's a large amount of costs when you add up all of the departments, if we were able to do that. But the next part is just like the complete lack of transparency. Like we dug this up because a member of parliament asked a question to the bureaucracy and many of the departments were still refusing to be transparent with this member of parliament. Now they were claiming, you know, third party sensitive information, but Ryan, I mean, that doesn't really pass the sniff test to me. Like, what do you think about that? No, it, it, it doesn't pass uh, the smell test either, uh, in my opinion. It, it's a pretty basic principle, right? If you're going to spend tax dollars, then you need to be honest with taxpayers about where that money is going. And um, and furthermore, I think you should also explain, like, why are these needed purchases and, and what value are we getting in return for it? That seems like a pretty basic uh, principle of transparency that's absolutely being violated here. Um and and I think it's you know it's quite aggravating, quite frankly, to see so many agencies say one, we don't track these purchases. Well, it's like well then start right. You should be keeping track of where you're spending our money. And two, that oh we had seven weeks, but we didn't have the time or the resources to look into this, or you know it's not even worth you know the effort to 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 get this information in response to a question from an elected representative. Um, so here's an idea, right? Since Justin Trudeau was first elected in 2015, the federal government has hired 98,000 new bureaucrats. And we know that because that's another story we broke here at the CTF. So how about each agency that isn't tracking this stuff takes one of those new bureaucrats, one of those new 98,000 bureaucrats that have been hired in recent years and assigns them into tracking how much money, how much taxpayer money they're dumping into things like branded air fresheners and promotional Rubik's cubes. Well, okay? hold on, Ryan, hold on. Like, let's not give them any ideas. Now they're going to want to go out on another hiring spree. And, you know, Ryan, you know, just to play devil's advocate, maybe they would push back on you and be like, well, look, Ryan, uh, to dig out those receipts from those shoe boxes, we got to go into the office to do that. <laughs> That's true. We also know that in addition to not being able to tell us how much money they're spending on branded promotional merch, the federal government also can't tell us where their people are working because they don't know how many people are working in the offices or working from home at this point. But that is a different matter for a different day. Uh, or the, the other thing, the other thing, the simple thing the federal government could do was just be like, hey, maybe let's lay off the branded golf balls and the promotional pizza cutters while increasing numbers of Canadians are like losing their businesses or, you know, losing jobs or struggling to stay in their homes um, and unable to fill up their grocery carts or their vehicles due to the uh, ongoing um, affordability crunch. Um, but then again, hey, that's that's just an idea from me, a lowly journalist. Radical.
Radical idea, sir. Uh, anyways, Ryan, hey, great job on this. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories that we've dug up. I mean, for a couple reasons, it really hammers home uh, the importance of transparency and when the government is failing on transparency. Uh, the second reason I really like this story is like, honestly, folks, if you added all of this promotional material across the government, it would be a lot of money. So highlighting the fact that it's not just a little bit of money, but they're actually spending a ton of money on this type of waste, I, I think is a great job. But number three, I mean, there's just some hilarious examples of how they're wasting our money and, and you know what we always say this but you have to mock these politicians they can handle outrage but they don't like being mocked and ryan i think your story does a great job of this uh folks if you want to learn more uh it, please do share with your friends and family but we're actually going to link the original story that ryan did uh, at taxpayer.com we're going to put that right in the show notes for you to read yourself